Welcome to episode 17 of The Closest They Came, a series where we take a look back on the days when drivers, winless at NASCAR's highest level, came painfully close to etching their names into the history books. Today we'll be looking back on Mike Wallace's race in the 2001 Checker Auto Parts 500 from Phoenix Raceway, bringing the series back to the 2001 season for the fifth time. Joining brothers Kenny and Rusty, Mike Wallace would enter into NASCAR competition in 1990, making his Bush Series debut at Martinsville, where he would bring Mark Reno's Chevy to a sixth-place finish. He would make his Cup Series debut at Phoenix in 1991, filling in for Jimmy Means. Making sporadic starts between the divisions throughout the early 90s, he would earn three victories for Barry Owen's team in the Bush Series and eventually land a consistent Cup Series ride, making 58 starts in Junie Donlevy's Ford between 1994 and 1996. Wallace would also run three full-time seasons in the Truck Series between 1998 and 2000, ultimately claiming four victories and two top five points runs in Jim Smith's Ultra Motorsports ride. He was then tapped as the driver for the Ultra Motorsports No. 7 Cup Series entry when they decided to expand at the beginning of 2001. The season would prove to be a struggle. However, right as he was beginning to find himself on the sidelines, Jeremy Mayfield's relationship with Penske would sour, opening the door for him to run six events in the 12 car as a teammate to his brother Rusty. Entering the Halloween weekend at Phoenix, Wallace had earned one top five and seven top ten finishes in 102 Cup Series starts up to that point. He would roll off the grid in 24th, making his way up to 17th by lap 34, when the first caution of the day would come out following multiple right front tire failures, including Bobby Hamilton, Sterling Marlin, and Ken Schrader. Wallace would pit with the leaders, coming off pit road in 16th, where he would line up for the lap 40 restart. He would show even more speed on this run, making his way into the top 10 by the time the race would be slowed for the second time on lap 72 after his brother Kenny left debris on the track. This would bring the leaders into the pits once more. With a solid stop, Wallace would come out in seventh for the lap 78 restart. And right behind him is another car that's got a terrific run going. Mike Wallace in the 12 car. He started back in 24th. Maybe Tony is joining the way, plowing the way through, and Mike Wallace is following. Yeah, Mike Wallace has been flying. Making his way into the top five on lap 80. You see the front of the 12 car of Mike Wallace. Look how less he's got cut out in the front of that car. He's got small, two small little holes, BT, for the brakes, but they're pulling a lot of the air for the brakes from underneath the car. Having it that way gives the car more downforce, so it's not going to slide as much. I noticed that this morning. 12 car was a pretty trick brake system there. What else do you have for us on a 12 car? Well, Wally, he has been loose on entry and tight in his center all day. They made a wedge adjustment on the first stop, an air pressure adjustment on this last stop. But remember, Mike Wallace is auditioning for a job for next year. This 12 team is auditioning to keep this team together for next year. A lot of rumors speculating this team may disband. They've got a lot to prove, and they're showing it right now as Mike Wallace continues to climb up to the pylon. Now fifth. Marty, the 12 team, does have a reputation for being aggressive with their camber. Peter Suspendo is the crew chief. Peter, with Mike Wallace in the car, do you run as aggressive camber or a little less when Mayfield was in the car? Oh, we got a little bit less than we normally would run. How did the tires look that came off the car? The tires look perfect. Everything built up look good. Tires definitely look good. We uh, we should have no camber issue whatsoever today. The tires look so good, they're actually talking about possibly a two-tire change on their last stop today. Eventually closing in and passing Jeff Gordon for fourth on lap 126. Right there, he can make them extremely loose. Williams race chase, the interval from Rusty Wallace back to brother Mike. 5.8 seconds. And like I said, Jeff just backed off the throttle and let him go. Michael Waltrip's troubles on lap 133 would bring out the yellow once more bringing the leaders back into the pits amid mounting concerns about tires. Wallace would lose a few spots on this stop, coming off in sixth in time for the lap 139 restart. Green flag on the racetrack. So Gordon back in traffic as we go back at it. Jeff Burton is the leader. Casey Atwood is second. He would get around Matt Kenseth to re-enter the top five on lap 141. Rusty Wallace going for second spot under Casey Atwood. He's got it. Although, the more rear brake you run, the more sideways you get when you get down in the corner. So either way, you got your hands full. 
Pretty heavy fight for fourth place on back. Andretti in the 43, Mike Wallace in the 12, Johnny Benson in the 10. Mike Wallace continues to impress in the 12 car, running in the third position. They feel like if the circumstances that they can control fall their way, they will have a good day, and that's what they're doing right now. They had an engine change unscheduled after happy hour because they just felt like it wasn't performing the way they needed it to. Right now, they're talking about going back to the air pressure that they had on their previous set of tires. Bill? Following tire issues for his brother Rusty and then Casey Atwood, Wallace would set his sights on Jeff Burton for the lead, taking the top spot for the first time on lap 195. Jeff Burton and Mike Wallace, what is going on? And a Part of us come to the pit stop, Marty. Boy, these guys on pit road can't catch a break. It does not pay to be in the lead. They're having a little trouble getting the right front off for Casey Atwood. Again, no warning. All he said was the car was a little bit loose. He did not complain about anything with the right front. And I asked Ray Everham earlier. He said they were not aggressive on the camber setting. It will be four tires and fuel. Again, if this cycles through, Rusty Wallace and Casey Atwood should be fine. The race will go back under caution for debris on lap 203, bringing the leaders back into the pits. A slow stop by the 12 crew would relegate Wallace back to fifth. The goal for the 12 team is to come in first and lead first. No adjustments for Mike Wallace, just four tires and fuels to Dave. He was very, very loose. And we see that Mike Wallace is going to come out of the fifth, the leader in fifth spot. The race would go back to green on lap 210. The 28 car must have had to be able to move up to the third position. And we've got three Wallace brothers running side by side back there. Burton, Rudd, Kenza, top three. Then Tony Stewart came off the pit lane fourth. Mike Wallace fifth. It's going to be tough before this race is over. There are the Wallace brothers in the 12, 2, and 1. Remember Rusty not on the lead lap. He would fight his way back up to fourth by the time Robert Presley crashed on lap 242. Wallace would take two tires on the subsequent pit stop, putting him back into the top spot on lap 243. Mike Wallace was first off the pit lane by a mile. I want to double check and see if he got all four tires or if they just took two. Huh, look at Mike Wallace. And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. Ricky Rudd goes by, and then Jeff Burton. If they change four on Mike Wallace's car, Two tires, I'm told, on the 12 car. So a little strategy call there by crew chief Peter Suspenzo, and Mike Wallace is going to be your new leader here in Phoenix. 70 laps to go. 246 complete, 312 make up the distance today. Matt Yoakum, how about the call by Mike Wallace's team for two tires? The call, Alan, didn't come until Mike Wallace was already in his pit stall. They were talking about four tires down pit road, and then Peter Suspenzo, the crew chief, said two tires, rights only, rights only. And then they made the change. It's something that Peter learned by watching the Bush Series race on Saturday when Kevin Harvick only took on two tires. They felt like Harvick was very strong at the end on two, and they feel like their cars would be very strong on two as well. The action would resume on lap 248, where an intense battle for the lead with a hard-charging Ricky Rudd would ensue. Ricky Rudd is looking on the inside of Mike Wallace. Can't quite make it. Falls back in behind him because he knows he's seen Mike Wallace is going to the bottom down in turn one every time. He's got to be solidly alongside that 12 before he goes down in the corner too hard. Pokes the nose in again for a look. Wallace up the racetrack. Can Rudd take advantage? He's there this time. Still inside, still inside, nice and smooth. Still down, still down there. Mike Wallace's radio. Mike just not giving in. No, but you got to think the four tires is going to win out eventually here. Although, I think he only has 25 laps on the left side for the 12 car of Mike Wallace. So it's not really a lot of laps on the left side tire. After contact from Jimmy Spencer, Kurt Busch would spin into the path of Mark Martin, Ryan Newman, Stacy Compton, and Dave Blaney in turn four on lap 256, putting the race under yellow for the sixth time. Wallace would stay out when the pits opened to retain the lead for the lap 266 restart. Over the top three as we go back at it. Mike Wallace gets a terrific run off of turn two. Can he get to the bottom of the racetrack? Yes, he did. And 
Now he has a lap car Let's go to work. between himself and Jeff Burton. Here we see another first-time Winston Cup winner today. Mike Wallace in his 103rd Winston Cup start. His best ever finish was a fifth-place run at Atlanta in November 94. And if he's trying to get Roger Penske's attention and convince him that this team needs to keep going next year and he needs to be driving it, he's doing a great job of it today. He certainly has. John Andretti would crash on the backstretch on lap 271, bringing out the seventh and final caution. The leaders would stay out once again. The final restart of the day would come on lap 275, setting up a fierce battle for the lead between Wallace and Jeff Burton. Mike Wallace, Jeff Burton, and Ricky Rudd have all cleared the lap car of Ron Hornaday. Oh, here goes Burton to the outside. Now, last restart, Burton could, didn't get going very well. He's going now, and it's what might scare him up the hill off turn two. Mike Wallace with just two tires on his last pit stop. I'll say it again. Remember, the guys chasing him got four fresh ones. Wallace settled down for the moment, or has it? Hang on. Here comes Burton looking outside again. Come on, come on. It'll be all clear. Burton would eventually claim the top spot on lap 279. Jeff Burton outside of Mike Wallace again. He is there. Oh, just between Burton and, I mean, Wallace and the wall. Oh, Joe, we still got a long way to go. Ricky Rudd trying to see which lane's going to open up. Jeff Burton has used that outside lane all day long in turns one and two. He just got the lead with it. Wallace would continue to fight on worn tires for the final 34 laps, ultimately crossing the line in second, 2.645 seconds behind Burton, who would claim his second victory of the season and 17th of his career. Mike Wallace, it's a career day from 24th to second, 2.645 seconds from your first win. You guys are getting closer, but this must seem like a win. <laughs> That's pretty big, wasn't it, Matt? I mean, uh, I just can't say enough for Penske Racing Mobile One. I mean, the Mobile One folks have just been so supportive of this, and uh, we've been able to run up front every time we've been in this car for the four races now, and we brought home a second, and uh, I couldn't be happier. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I'd love to win this thing, but Jeff Burton actually had the faster car most of the day. You know, him and Rusty were probably the quickest cars out there, and uh, but uh, my crew did a phenomenal job. Chassis setup was really good. The Penske motors ran well. The whole entire mobile team, and... Uh, my wife, Carla, and the kids at home, they fought through for a lot of this. You know, we've been through a lot of ups and downs this year, and this is kind of a little just reward. And it's my mom's birthday, so, Mom, happy birthday very much. And uh, phenomenal. We're here second in Phoenix. Following 2001, Wallace would continue making starts across all three of NASCAR's premier divisions, claiming additional victories in the Xfinity Series at Daytona in 2004 and in the Truck Series at Talladega in 2011. He would make his final Cup Series start in the 2015 Daytona 500 for Premium Motorsports, last competing in NASCAR competition in the Xfinity Series for Johnny Davis in 2020. Mike Wallace was a journeyman driver, spending the majority of his career having relatively short stints and often underfunded equipment. Well known for his super speedway prowess throughout his career, he showed the ability to get it done nearly anywhere when given the opportunity in solid equipment. And on one fall afternoon out in the desert in late 2001, he nearly brought home a trophy at the highest level.